Hi and welcome to tutorial 55 in this series of tutorials designed to help you program in TradeStation Easy Language. If you're not part of our email list then please go to markplex.com and uh, sign up and then I'll be happy to let you know when I create new tutorials or programs. So today's tutorial I created uh, in response to a suggestion from somebody on the list and uh, it's a very very simple tutorial. Essentially what we're doing is subtracting down volume from up volume and dividing it by the sum of down volume and up volume and then we're plotting a line on the chart and you can see if you watch this chart for a moment that that line is changing as the volume situation changes. So uh, so let's go straight in and uh, I'll show you how to do this. Incidentally it's sort of similar to the uh, the TradeStation standard indicator volume ratio only uh, the volume ratio uses an average and we're not using an average. So uh, what I'm going to do I've already uh, created the uh, a blank uh, show me study so let's just go right ahead and type it in. So first of all, we're going to create a, um, a variable called up full less down full ratio. It's a sort of explanatory name. And that is going to be equal to up ticks minus down ticks. Now the meaning of these keywords depends on the settings that we have set up for the thing we're looking at in this case the e-mini and um, I'm gonna go back and uh, show you that in a moment so we're going to divide that by the upticks plus the downticks okay so that's the uh, the first thing we're going to do I'm just going to put that in brackets just so that it's sort of easier to read and uh, having done that we're then going to plot some lines on the chart so well first of all let's create a variable for this keyword that we just created copy tap tap paste control V put zero in there to start with and uh, we're going to draw some lines now so what I'm going to say is if that uh, variable up full less down ratio is greater than zero then and uh, we're going to do gonna create lines we're going to call it up line equals tl new it's the standard uh, line drawing function in TradeStation t uh, we're going to go from the high we're going to adjust this in a moment but initially I'll just show you a simplified version um, and we're going to go to the high plus whatever this ratio is copy that again and then we're going to set the color of this set color again standard trade station up line we're going to make that green and we're going to set the thickness of it. So TL set size upline. And let's just make that two to start with. So that is end. And I'm going to say else. Begin again. And now we're going to do the same thing. In other words, if it's set, if the, uh, the ratio is equal to zero or less than zero and uh, what I'm going to do is just copy this just to save some time and then just edit it so paste that so I'm going to say um, downline dn line equals except this time we're going to draw the line from the low to the the low and uh, this is actually going to be a negative number so we can leave that as it is and I notice we've got a little spelling error there it should be up full well, looks like I spelt it incorrectly everywhere so that probably would have been okay but just make sure that looks correct uh, except this time we're going to make this to be uh, red K 
keep the thickness the same and then we're just going to say end semicolon. So that is the, the guts of the program. If we press F3, okay, we've got an error here. That is because we didn't create variables for the upline and downline. So let's just do that right now. Up, line, zero, down, line, zero. And press F3. Okay. And we can see the lines forming there. Now the the lines underneath are not being colored correctly and that is because we haven't we've set that as upline. So what we need to do is change that to downline, downline, and uh, I think we should be okay now. So F, press F3 again and look at the the chart. Now one thing you'll notice different from the one I showed you initially is that the uh, the lines are joining onto the bars. So what we might want to do is just create a little adjustment just to separate them slightly from the bar. Now one way that you can do this is to calculate the uh, the difference between the highest and the lowest prices displayed on the chart. So let's do that and we can uh, do that using some again the some trade station functions. I'm going to call it display so we go get app info and uh, the thing that we're going to look for is AI highest disp value and again if you're not familiar with get app info if you right click that word and then you should be able to open up your help uh, file and uh, see exactly what the meaning and the options are and uh, the other extreme is the lowest AI lowest display value so that should calculate the difference between the highest and lowest prices displayed on the screen at the moment we're going to need to add another variable which we're going to call disp and what we're also going to do is we're going to create an input just so that we can actually work out how to uh, how far away we want it we'll call that um, disp percentage and we'll set that say as five to start with so we could say the uh, the adjustment let's just create another variable here I'm gonna be using this to store the value based on the difference between high and low price so we're gonna say adjustment is equal to the disp which is the difference between how low times by disp percentage which we've just created as an input and we're going to divide that by a hundred and we're going to put semicolon on there so press F3 let's just check we haven't made any errors now that's not doing anything at the moment because what we actually now need to do is put and add the adjustment in here so I'm going to go add the adjustment and on the low side we're actually going to subtract the, in fact I've done that no that's correct but we need to add it here as well just so that we move it away and then on the low side we're going to delete the adjustment like so okay let's press F3 and see what we've got so what we should now see is that the the bars have moved away a little bit from the the actual price bars which is quite uh, quite useful now one thing just uh, just out of interest is if we were to uh, create a print statement to see what the is happening with the the references the bar references what we'll see is that for the bar being formed the uh, the line we're not drawing a different line every tick it's essentially the same line that's being redrawn and we can see that by just uh, creating a print statement so I'm just going to print the uh, the up line and the down line references and we'll look at those on the trade station output bar um, that looks correct I think up line down line F3 okay so if we now go to the chart and uh, I'm just going to turn off this 
so I've got a little more room I'm going to go view easy language output bar and now you'll see uh, on the latest bar which is the 834 you'll see that these um, these line even though it's been redrawn you'll notice that it's using the same the same reference so it's essentially the same line that's being uh, drawn over and over again and if we were to wait just a few seconds to go to the 835 bar you'll see that uh, either the up uh, up line or down line or both will be uh, will be incremented so let's just uh, wait for a couple of seconds and uh, there we go 835 and you'll see that um, that line has been incremented okay so uh, apart from that I think um, another thing that you might want to do for instance if you went format analysis techniques and format you might decide well I don't really need this thing running every tick so what we're going to do is just turn off their update value and entry bar tick by tick and I'm going to say OK then close and now what we'll see is that there is no line being formed here and if we were to right click in the output bar and press clear we'll see that we're not getting a line drawn so what will happen is we would need to wait until the end of the bar and then the line would be drawn right at the end of the bar so let's just wait for a couple of seconds and see that happen okay you'll see that the uh, the line was formed then as the bar was completed but this is maybe something that you would want to see happening in real time uh, the other thing that you might want to do in a situation like this would be say you wanted to make the thickness of the line a user input well we could do that uh, very easily by creating a uh, say a thickness uh, input let's just make that two semicolon and uh, we could then instead of hard coding the number in the the thickness we could just put our thickness there so press uh, F3 and now if we go back to the chart we could uh, let's just close the output bar for a moment we could go format analysis technique and then we could by clicking on the inputs tab we could say okay we want to have a uh, a greater thickness let's go with let's go with a five let's go with a really big thickness so you can see that the thickness has changed there okay so it's probably a little little overkill it's going to turn it back to two okay change the wrong thing change that back to two that's that was five that's the thing that separates it from the bar if you recall so there we go uh, finally the other thing that you might want to do in a program such as this is we really don't know um, what this uh, ratio value is going to be vis-a-vis -vis the price of the uh, of the instrument well you, know, you could find that out of course but one thing we could do is just simply create a an input here which we'll call vol scalar and let's just make that uh, two to start with and then uh, what we could do is actually multiply the the ratio by that amount so I'm just going to put in vol scalar here and uh, what this is going to do it means now we can control essentially how long those lines appear so you see they're bigger now because we're scaling them um, we could go down we could say okay I want them to be uh, only half the length they were before so we put in 0.5 click OK and now you'll see that the lines are a lot uh, less big so anyway um, I will make this program available if you uh, if you want to save yourself a little bit of typing um, for a uh, for a nominal fee the other thing is that uh, I recently created a, an additional site to Markplex called chartplex.com c-h-a-r-t-p-l-e-x.com uh, in which I'm focusing on multi charts and power language programming a lot of the content is very similar from the Markplex but if you are a multi charts user you might consider 
joining that site as well uh, in order to see things that are developed specifically for multi-charts. And one thing I forgot to mention uh, that I said I would I would mention is uh, if we go to format symbol and uh, you'll see here that we have uh, a little thing that says for volume use trade volume and uh, the choice is trade volume or tick count and that will determine what the uh, the keywords up ticks and down ticks mean in the circumstance for a in this case a one minute chart. So anyway, I would suggest if you go to the the trade station. Uh, support wiki and look up volume you'll see all the different ways that those keywords can be used depending on whether you're using a chart what the time frame is whether you're using radar screen and so on anyway thank you uh, thank you once again